Hello, my friends. I already told you that my research was based on my analysis of the book of Revelation. I will now tell you the main lines that allowed me to realize the extasion. If you want to know all the details, I invite you to go to my website, extasion.fr where you will find the different version of the book I wrote, The Secret of the Apocalypse Extasium. The connection with the book of Revelation did not allow me to immediately put in place the elements found. It is only a blueprint and unfortunately not a detailed plan. There were still a lot of uncertainties, especially about the color ratio in the central part, which I had a hard time figuring out. I have tried a lot of attempts over the years. The relationships of color and form are interdependent in this particular image. The slightest change would throw the whole thing off balance. I had a lot of difficulty in dissociating what was supposed to be a visible painted image from what was an animated image in color light. Especially since there are other images interwoven with the previous ones in fluorescent and also phosphorescent paint, like the part of a mechanism. It took me a long time to assemble them. Even before I discovered the relationship with the book, certain shapes appeared to me with force, in particular a blue square ring floating in space that I perceived during the highway trip from New Orleans to Baton Rouge in summer 1981. It will be revealed a long time later to be the base of the wall surrounding the heavenly Jerusalem. There was also a second square at a certain distance that I perceived in gold or cherry on pink. It took me a very long time to put these two colors together and realize that this inspiration I had had on the road trip was the basis to the final painting, The Gate of Ecstasy. I managed to separate the images. What is visible in daylight corresponds to the description at the beginning of the book. The light animation in music corresponds to the events that are described. What is fluorescent is part of the heavenly Jerusalem, and the first recent image that remains in the jar is what is called the glory of God, the basic drawing found on October 27, 1981, which I had called the Corridor of Infinity, is finally in gold fluorescent light. And it is not only a corridor that this drawn construction suggests, but also a city. It is important to understand that in my analysis, all the description must be freed from the decorations which dresses them and brought back to their fundamental geometrical structure. It is this structure that will generate, according to the impulse it receives, a more or less realistic humanism or animalism image in the mind of the one who contemplates it depending on his ability to receive it. Thus, a little shepherdess goes to see a beautiful lady speaking to her at Lourdes. This lady never said she was the mother of Jesus. Whereas someone with higher spirituality abilities would have been able to receive a more abstract message without the need for a figurative image. However, he would have had a hard time transferring it to the rest of the world and with such power. A comparison could be made with computers. Geometry is above all made of numbers. Computer science is only numbers. A sequence of particular numbers of which a certain arrangement from a software that only a computer scientist is able to understand. 
for the average person, this software must be represented as an image on the screen. Depending on the impulse it receives, this sequence of numbers will show different images. My approximation, what could say? that I am looking for the software that underlies the image described in the book of Revelation, which is not easy. According to my experience and discoveries, there is a screen which is not white, as in a cinema, but structure with flat geometrical construction whose way of treating them in colors gives the illusion of relief, of depth, and goes until evoking a landscape of another world. By coming to life either silently through various lighting effects or through the play of light caused by music, they offer different aspects and become bearers of meaning. There is a construction of luminous images that will come to life and also a final and static fluorescent image the celestial Jerusalem, whose name will change after a certain discovery. The three image structures, also different, are closely interwound. This explains the difficulty to extract them to realize the work, especially since a force will appear soon. And finally, there is accessory equipment located in the room that intervenes in John's visions, but is not directly part of the painting. In addition, the description makes use of cinematographic effects unknown obviously in antiquity. Wide shot, narrow shot, field, counterfeel, bottom view, plunging view, zoom, inversion of direction, etc. And it is much more sophisticated than current cinematic techniques. John had the impression of being inside the three dimension image. He thinks he sees scenes of characters in front of him and then behind him when it is the same thing, the same character, according to my analysis. Such a geometrical image, depending on the focus, the animated illumination and the message it carries will appear to him very differently. Moreover, the same still image, the heavenly Jerusalem, will represent at the same time a view from afar, a central zoom, a view from underneath, an image clear of the others. A bit like in the time of Romanesque painting, when scenes were represented without taking into account the perspective with an apparent help realness, small characters and other big ones, gigantic, on the same plans, or bigger than the city or the castle they defended. This representation was intentional, intended to express the relative importance of one or the other, or to express particular messages coming from another world. I could not repeat in details each part of the painting. It would be too tedious. I don't remember all the faces either. There were so many. For many, it took me many years to verify that my intuition was right.